So I start with a question. My question is, are we interpreting the Bible? And I want you to be very honest with yourself. This is hard to do, okay? Are we interpreting the Bible the way the Pharisees did or the way Jesus did? There is a difference. And that difference was a part of the wholesale rejection on the part of the Pharisees for, to Jesus. Part of the reason, and we've discovered, we've, we've uncovered stuff like this in our Tuesday studies. We've gone through John, and we've talked about why did Israel reject Jesus? And we go, well, he wasn't the militant Messiah, and he didn't, he didn't meet, and all of those things are, I, I 100%, I, I think there's a lot of reasons why they rejected Jesus. But I want to investigate a more specific one, which is how the Pharisees read Torah and the prophets. Let's say the whole thing, the law and the prophets and the Psalms. How they read it versus how Jesus read it. Now, we don't have any moment in the New Testament where the Pharisees sit down with a scroll and unscroll it and, ask, and start to tell us their interpretation of scriptures. And then Jesus unscrolls it and goes, okay, here's how I see that same text. We do have some moments where Jesus challenges the Pharisees. Hey, why don't you guys go see what this means? Come back and tell me what you get. And they, they fail that test on more than one occasion. But I just want you to, with, without putting any thought into this question, I think the answer all of us would give is, well, I don't read the Bible like a Pharisee. I mean, how, how could I read the Bible like a Pharisee? I read the Bible like Jesus. Of course I read it like Jesus. And so I would be with you. I would say, yeah, of course I read the Bible like Jesus. Let's make sure, okay? Because reading the Bible like Jesus and reading the Bible like a Pharisee are two entirely distinct ways of reading it. And I just want to say up front, before I give you any text and before you answer this question, I think most of us Christians read the Bible like a Pharisee. Otherwise, what would be the point of this message, right? I mean, if we've already got it nailed and we're already reading it like Jesus, who cares? We've already got it figured out. I think most of us read it like a Pharisee. Here's, what it, here's the difference. Here's, here's a Pharisee reading in the Bible. A Pharisee has strict obedience to the law at the expense of people and at the expense of love. It would sound something like this. I don't care how people take it. I don't care what people think of it. It's the Word of God. Or it would sound like I used to hear it. The Bible says it. I believe it. It's so. Doesn't matter. None of your arguments matter because I just made the ultimate statement. I just threw down the ultimate trump card. The Bible says it. I believe it. It's so. For Jesus, the goal of Scripture is to lead us to love and to compassion over compliance. Let that soak in for a moment. It sounds like this. You've heard it said one way. But I say it to you another way. In other words, here's what it says. Here's what I say. Which way do we read the Bible? Do we read the Bible with strict obedience to the law? I don't care how people take it. I don't care what you think of it. The Word of God says it. I believe it. It is so. Or do we read the Bible? Hey, I know the Bible says this, but here's how I see it. Most of us have a problem with the second rendering. Anybody that says, yes, the Bible says this, but here's something I want you to think about. We go, oh, no, no, no. Bible says it, I believe it. I don't need your commentary. I don't need your thoughts. I don't need your opinions. I don't need you to filter it through anything. I, Bible says it's good enough for me. And, and we end up with 43,000 denominations because obviously we don't really know exactly what it says, but we do want to adhere to it the best that we possibly can, and we do it even at the expense of people because forget how it makes people feel, forget if that text marginalizes people, forget if that text sends pe pushes people away, forget if that text is terrifying and confusing and hurts because it doesn't matter how people feel and it doesn't matter what people think, it matters what the Word says. Okay? Now, how do you read it? Like a Pharisee or like Jesus? Matthew 5.17 is our text. It's one of the most famous grace passages, probably right up there with John 1.17, the whole grace and truth passage. Do not think, Jesus says, that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy. I came to fulfill. Don't think that I came to get rid of or to... to to make obsolete the law and the prophets. That's the encompassment of what we would call the Old Testament. Let's, for sake, of, for sake of discussion, say, don't think I came to destroy the Old Testament. I didn't come to destroy it. I came to fulfill it. 
Don't just think Ten Commandments, because Jesus doesn't stop it. He doesn't just say the law. So the law and the prophets. They're really the whole body of work of the left side of the Bible, the old, the old side of the Bible. Jesus says, don't think I came to abolish it, but I rather came to fulfill it. It's probable that Jesus is defending himself because his actions, I say probable, not possible. I, I put, originally typed in, it's possible. And then I went, no, it's not just possible, it's probable. Because think about it. It's probable that Jesus is defending himself because his actions appear to indicate that he has no respect for the law. The only reason that you say in public, hey guys, don't think I'm here to abolish the law. I'm here to fulfill the law. The only reason you say that out loud is if people think that you're trying to abolish the law. So Jesus has been doing something. There's something happening in his lifestyle, in his ministry, in his... I'll I'll even say in his biblical interpretation, that's causing people to elbow one another in in scholarly circles and go, yeah, I don't know about this Jesus. I don't think he takes the law and the prophets serious. I don't think that he cares as much about doing things the way they ought to be done. And this, of course, will surface in the ministry of Jesus because he gets into all those arguments about Sabbath day healings, remember? And he gets into all those arguments about picking corn on the Sabbath, his disciples are you know, eating on the Sabbath and they're not supposed to be doing labor and all of these arguments that Jesus, he gets in, but he doesn't stay in. He doesn't give these long speeches. He's just these quick jabs and he moves on. And, and it leaves us wondering, how does Jesus handle the law and the prophets? I think the fact that he says Matthew 5, 17 is an indicator that he's been misunderstood.